This is the instructional video for part number six, Axle Peg. We're going to begin the sketch by doing a new file, standard IPT. I'm going to start my sketch using the XY plane. I'm going to begin this sketch by drawing half of the axle peg. I'm going to draw half the axle peg because I'm going to rotate it around the center point using the revolve feature to create the extrusion. So I'm going to use my line tool and I'm going to draw up from the origin to the underside of the cap of the axle peg. This distance is one inch. I'm going to right click OK. I'm going to go back to my line tool and back to the origin. You notice I click down here and I'm going to draw the radius of the axle peg which is 0.125. I'm just going to right click OK and I'm going to move down my dimension here. And then I'm going to use my line tool once again and I'm going to be very careful to grab the end of this 0.125 line. I can see that appear <clears throat> using my green dot. So I'm going to use that green dot and I am going to draw a straight line up to the underside of that cap again at one inch. So I could just type in one, enter. And I'll move my dimension out over here. And I have this U shape right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just zoom into the top here. This cap has an overall dimension from the inside to the outside edge over here at 0.211. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to do a subtraction dimension. So I'm going to click the end of the second one inch line I drew going out to the right. I'm going to type in a formula which is 0.211 and I'm going to subtract the distance that I've already come at the bottom down there at 0.125. And that'll give me the distance of the end of that cap. So I'm going to drag this down just a little bit so we can see a little better. And that turns out to be 0.086. I'm going to use my line tool. And I'm going to go back to the end of that 0 0.086 line, finding my green dot. And I'm going to draw a line straight up. There is a little flat face on the top of this cap. And that distance is 0 0.031. Right click OK. I'm going to move my dimension here just to clear things up. I now need to do the rest of the distance of the top of this cap. The cap goes from the one inch line straight up to the flat surface on the cap, and that distance is 0.125. So I'm going to take my line tool, and I'm going to go to the end of my line that is at one inch, and I'm going to go straight up to 0.125. I'm going to right click OK, and you can see that I have that 0.125 inch dimension, and I'm just going to move out to the left here. Then I'm going to create the flat on the top. I'm going to go to the end of that 0.125 line and I'm going to go to the right with my line tool and I'm going to create this flat. This flat is a total diameter of 0.25. So since I'm only drawing half, I'm going to divide that in half and that distance is 0.125. The last part that I need to complete is this arc that connects this 0.125 line to this 0.031 line. To do that, I'm going to use the arc tool and I'm going to grab right underneath the word arc here, this black triangle. I'm going to select it and I'm going to grab down at the arc center point. And I'm going to make my first selection that is going to grab this center line that I drew. My next selection is going to be the end of this 0.125 inch line. And then I'm simply just going to draw just a little bit of an arc because it's not going to connect directly to the end of that 0 0.031 line, unless I put a dimension. I'm going to right click OK. And then I'm going to zoom in. And what I want to do is I want to connect this point to this point. So if I use the coincident constraint up here in the geometric constraint window, I'm going to select the coincident, which is at the top left, and I'm going to grab the end point of my arc, and I'm going to grab the end point of this 0 0.031 line. And you're going to see that it now connects and completes that arc. And if I go to dimension that arc 
I should see that it, it creates a surface radius of 0.236. It's going to give me the error that I can't change it. I don't want to change it because that is the area that I was looking or the dimension that I was looking for. That is the completion of the sketch. So now we are going to finish the sketch. And I'm going to use the revolve feature. It automatically selects my profile. And the next thing it's going to ask me is for my axes. So I'm going to select the center line that I first drew. And you're going to notice that it revolves around that point. I'm going to select OK. The next thing I'm going to do is create the threads that go on the bottom portion of the axle peg. There is a space at the top right here, an offset of a quarter of an inch. So if I select thread, and if you are selecting thread for the first time since Inventor has been open, it may take a little while to let that load. I'm going to first unclick this full length box. And I want this offset to be 0.25. Now if I return over to my axle peg, I need to select the face that I would like to do. So I'm going to come up to my window, grab face, and you'll notice that if I select toward the top portion, I get the offset at the top. And if I drag my mouse to the bottom, I get the offset at the bottom. I want the offset to be at the top, so I want to make sure that I click toward the top of the axle peg. And then I'm going to go to specifications, and I'm going to make sure that this specification is at a size of 0.25 and has a designation of quarter 20 UNC. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to create the threads on my axle peg. I'm going to create a eased edge on the bottom here, so I'm going to use the chamfer tool. I'm going to click chamfer, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the distance first, and I'm going to change that distance to 0 0.03. It's a 45 degree chamfer, so it defaults. If you just use the distance here, it defaults to a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to grab the bottom of my axle peg. I'm going to select OK. Lastly, I'm going to create a sketch on this top flat face. So I'm going to grab the top flat face, and I'm going to use the polygon feature. So I'm going to go underneath rectangle, where this black arrow is, and I'm going to draw all the way down to polygon, and I need to create a hexagon. So I'm going to make sure that the number of sides is at six. I'm going to start this sketch, this polygon, at the center, so I should get a green dot, and I'm just going to draw up. Okay, I will right click. This is an arbitrary dimension. So I'm going to now dimension this hexagon. And I want to create a dimension from across flats. So it doesn't matter if I select this one and this one, or this one and this one, or this one and this one, as long as I am selecting first a line and the one directly across from it. So I would select this one next. This distance needs to be 5 30 seconds of an inch. So I'm going to type in 5 slash 32. And that will give me 5 30 seconds of an inch. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish sketch and I'm going to extrude that polygon. I need it to cut in, so I'm going to change this dimension to 0.111 and I need a cut extrusion, so I'm going to make sure that I select the cut extrusion in the column here. And then secondly, I need to change direction, so I'm going to use direction 2. And we'll see that it now shifts it into my part. I'm going to select OK. And that is the completion of part number 6, axle peg.